Hi, my name is Makai Glenn, and I'm a fourth year OPA student at the Curtis Institute of Music. The pieces I will be playing for you are the eighth and twelfth movements from a set of twelve fantasies by Georg Philipp Telemann. A little bit about this composer. He lived from 1681 to 1767. He was a German composer who was known for being very, very prolific. He wrote over 3,000 works, but unfortunately about half of those have been lost. Still, his influences survived him, and he's especially because of his heavy influence in the Baroque era. He was really, really well known for his German mix style, which incorporated multiple nationalities, Italian, French, and German, into one sort of conglomerate style, which you can hear very prevalent throughout these pieces, especially in the dance-like themes he uses. These pieces were originally written for the flute, but I'll be playing for them for you on oboe, as is very commonly done, and you can hear the contrast in characters very heavily between the 8th and the 12th, as the 8th is a little bit more heroic and fun, while the 12th is a little bit more intense and serious.
Hello, my name is Jamison Hillian, and I'll be performing Evocations by Henri Tomasi. Tomasi was a French 20th century composer and conductor, and some of his notable works include In Praise of Folly, Nuclear Era, and The Silence of the Sea. Evocations was published in 1969, about three years before his death, and the word evocation is the act of bringing up or recalling a feeling or memory to the conscious mind. I'm sure we are all familiar with the mysterious powers that music has, such as its ability to move us physically or literally, or its ability to bring up memories hidden far in the back of our minds. And today I wanted to speak on music's ability to take us places. Throughout this piece, you and your Tomasi bring out sounds from vastly different parts of the world using just a solo oboe. The first movement, Peruvian, is based off of the percussive sounds of ancient Peruvian drums. The second movement, Nigerian, is a contrast between a playful bird call and a heavier folk song. The third movement, Cambodian, is a xylophone melody. And um, the final movement, Ecossaise, is a Scottish jig. Although I've never been to any of these places myself, this music really opens my eyes to the culture that each destination has to offer and drives me to want to learn more. And it also reminds me that though we are living in times where we can't physically visit these places ourselves, there is a vast and ready world out there waiting for us to return to when it is safe to do so. Thank you so much for listening.
My name is Chris Correa, and I am a freshman oboist at the Curtis Institute of Music. The first piece I'll be playing today is the Parable No. 3 by Vincent Persichetti. Persichetti was born in Philadelphia in 1915, and it was in this city that he spent much of his life. He studied conducting at Curtis with Fritz Reiner, and later taught composition at Juilliard, making the commute to New York every week. Over the course of his life, Persichetti wrote 25 of these parables, each radically different. Number 20 is an hour-long opera based on the story of Chicken Little. Number 9 is a symphony for wind ensemble. And number 3 is written for solo oboe. When asked about his music, Persichetti used to describe it as graceful and gritty, often switching between the two or combining them in unique ways. Both of these qualities are clearly present in this parable. But by gritty, did Persichetti mean that his music was not supposed to be played beautifully? I think this question mirrors one about modern music in general. Is the music of modernism supposed to be harsh, cruel, and angry? Or does it teach us that if we search hard enough, we can find beauty in everything?
The next piece I will play today is the Sonatina for Solo Oboe by Ernst Krennick. Krennick was quite an interesting figure. He married three times, once to the daughter of Gustav Mahler, he fought in the Austrian army during World War I, and he wrote many electronic compositions. When the Nazis annexed Austria during World War II, he moved to America, where he spent much of his life. He was friends with Webern and Berg, and it was these two, along with Mahler, who cast such strong influences on his music. Krennick was especially known for his operas, and I think you'll find that to be reflected in this sonatina. The mood of this piece is constantly changing, from angry to playful to beautiful to mocking. One can almost imagine a dialogue of two characters on a stage. Throughout the piece, there permeates a strong sense of humor, and in many ways, this is surprising. After all, this man lived through two world wars. Taken in that context, the sonatina for solo oboe is a statement of optimism, of humor, and a bright light in the darkness.
Hello, my name is Cameron Slayton, and I'll be performing four of the six etudes for solo oboe by Gilles Silvestrini. An oboist himself, Silvestrini composed his six etudes for solo oboe while a student at the Paris Conservatory. In writing these etudes, he was inspired by the art of Impressionist painters and the music of Chopin and Debussy. For each movement, he chose a prominent French Impressionist painting to serve as inspiration, and in the style of an Impressionist artist, his goal was to create an impression to the eyes of the beholder. While the etudes do pose a noteworthy challenge, Silvestrini did not write the pieces for the sake of technical virtuosity. He has said that he is committed to using technique to create expressive tension or to suggest a certain type of harmonic or polyphonic writing. In imitating the style of piano and harp technique, Silvestrini was striving to bring a new and exciting dimension to the oboe's capabilities. Thank you for listening.
Hi everyone, my name is Oliver Talukter, I'm from Glenview, Illinois, and I'm a first year student here at the Curtis Institute of Music. Today I'll be performing for you the first three movements from a piece by Alyssa Morris titled Collision Etudes. This piece was inspired by and composed as a response to Gilles Silvestrini's etude collection titled Six Etudes for Oboe. Similar to how Silvestrini's etudes were based on six French Impressionist paintings, Collision Etudes is based on six paintings by female artists. The three I'll be playing for you today are titled Summertime by Mary Cassatt, City Landscape by Joan Mitchell, and Jimson Weed by Georgia O'Keeffe. The term collision in the title reflects the many cultures and beliefs that are in the U.S. and also refers to the contemporary style of the music. I felt that this piece was really important to play and share with you all today because it celebrates all of our uniqueness and diversity, especially in a time where our country is so divided. Thank you and enjoy.